The Hanley Report, as you know, proposed 12 major hospitals for the country and the downgrading of 26 general hospitals to daycare and outpatient institutions. This report was rejected by the public and medical opinion as deeply flawed. But it was not rejected by the HSE of the government. It started with a five million pound promise by Mr. Brian Cowan when he was Minister for Health many years ago. And it has now grown to a multi-million euro investment. It is money that is often promised but never delivered. A word of caution. It is not money that we are talking about here today. It is the withdrawal of our services from Nasty Perry. Remember this. They spent 15 million on Monaghan Hospital to keep them quiet. But that didn't stop the HSC from removing their services from Monaghan. There is an old saying, when you sup with the devil, <laughs> you need a very long spoon. <laughs> when you sup with the HSE, you need nothing shorter than a shovel. There's a very big march going on in Dublin today and I decided that I would come here to Nina to be with you for two reasons. <laughs> Firstly, to stand shoulder to shoulder with my colleague, Senator Alan Kelly, who has told me of the importance of Nina Hospital to the people of this area and the importance of this campaign and this demonstration today to ensure that it is not downgraded. The second reason is that I believe strongly myself in the importance of local hospitals. You know, there's two great passions in, in, in rural Ireland and in Ireland. One was the passion for the land and the passion for our health, for our looking after or caring for our people. And it was brilliantly penned by John B. Keane in his field to play. And when, when it came to doing the damage that had to be done, the bull in a last minute appeal to his son, Ty, he said, Ty, don't do it, Ty. And I say here today, to Mara Hopter and to Michael Lowry, you have time to change. Don't do it, Michael. Don't do it, Mara, for the people. We're here because I got my hands on a report that the HSE refused to publish. This report was concluded in December 2007, and they only released it after I said I would release it for them. What did it say? It said, it said that ye, us and the pe people of North Tipperary, we were not important enough to have our own hospital. We were not important enough to have the same service as all those in Limerick, in Cork, and in Dublin. We are different people. We're not. We're second class citizens. Well, I don't agree with that. And I will fight that all the way. We'll keep fighting until we have a government and a health body that respects us. Until we have a government and a health body that treats us the same as they treat people in Dublin. And we have a government and a health body that can look us in the eye and say what they're doing for us is right. However, this is not a fair organization. This is the HSE, and this is the government's way. Their only currency that they know in this issue 
is lies and damned lies. Which is that a nurse working in Limerick Hospital told me that regularly in Limerick they run out of sheets. Sheets. They run out of sheets and what they have to do is put the stained sheets back on the bed. And I think she meant blood stained. At different times of my life, I was both a patient and indeed a member of staff at Nina Hospital. The area of accident and emergency is an area that we must deliver the best quality of care and results for patients. The greater the risk of life, the more specialised the, the care and attention must be. And where lives are at risk, quality of care comes before convenience of care. Practices at Nina Hospital have been satisfactory over the years in the area of accident and emergency. However, we have learned that the physicians that we have, and they do indeed do a good job, but they are self-governing. There are only two hospitals in the country, Ennis and Nina, where the accident and emergency physicians are self-governing. In other words, they make the decisions themselves and they are not directly linked to the senior accident and emergency consultants in Limerick. That in the end, that in the long term is not sustainable. I will not stand against medical evidence that tells me otherwise that patients' lives are at risk so long as there is... Uh, Mr Chairman, I, whether you'd like me to continue or not, I'm quite happy to do so. Order, please. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, previous, I'm going to ignore do those who don't afford the courtesy someone to speak. And what I want to say is this, what I want to say is this, and if it takes me 20 minutes to say it, I will say it. What I want to say is this, before the last general election, I was very open, I was very straight, and I was very forward with the public of North Tipperary. And I told them, that at that particular time, I got the impression that there was a wish that there would be a change of government in this country. I gave a commitment that if I was elected as an independent, that my first preference would be that there would be an alternative government put in place. The election was held, the political parties put their policies and put their views before the public, and the reality is that Fine Gael and Labour, which was my preferred option, simply didn't have enough of votes to form a government. Had they enough of votes, I would have supported them. <laughs> secondly, secondly, Fianna Fáil formed a government, and as an independent, I felt that I had a duty, a responsibility, an obligation to act in the best interests of the people who elected me. And that's exactly what I did. Now, could I tell... Could I tell some of the political activists here from the Labour Party in front of me, could I give them one little example when they talk about political hypocrisy? When they talk about political hypocrisy. I will use my position to guarantee its future. I will be always with Nina and for Nina, and that's the way it will be. Thank you.